Excuse me, does this road go all the way to Long Pond? I've been standing here all day and it hasn't gone nowhere yet. I'm not sure asking locals will help, Ray. Uh, Maybe we're better off just walking along Route 16 here in Glover, Vermont until we find the pond. Well, I'm guessing it should be easy enough to spot. It's a pond. Right, and that was probably true at one point, but the legend here is about a pond that ran away. Hi, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 107 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. And I'm Ray Osier. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England, one week and one story at a time. And thank you to our Patreon patrons who are sponsoring this week's episode. Thank you, patrons. Now, these are the folks who help pay for our hosting and production costs, which have been rising the longer we go. For sure. If you'd like to join them in helping the cause, go to patreon.com slash New England Legends. For as little as three bucks per month, you'll get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes no one else gets to hear. And please, if you enjoy our show, consider telling a friend or two on social media or at the bar or, Mm. I don't know, scream it out loud next time you're (laughs) at someplace quiet. It helps a lot when you spread the word. All right, Jeff. So I've heard of runaway trains. Sure. Runaway brides. Of course. But I've never heard of a runaway pond. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, but they say it happened in northern Vermont in the town of Glover back in 1810. So let's head back there and set this up. It's early June of 1810, and it's been dry around here for months now. And for people who farm or run a mill, dry can spell disaster. Now let's meet the only local miller. His name is Aaron Wilson. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Now, have you lived here your whole life? Not yet. Aaron Wilson runs the mill powered by the nearby Barton River, and he lives there with his wife. And considering this drought, this guy's got problems. Right. Barton River is crawling along because it's been so dry. And if the river is crawling, so too is the mill. That's when Aaron Wilson gets an idea. There's a body of water about five miles north of his mill called Long Pond. It's about one mile long and half a mile wide and 125 feet deep in the deepest part. And no one lives around the pond. It's mostly thick forest. The pond is located in an elevated section of the land not too far from the banks of the Barton River. So the idea is simple. He wants to hire a crew of men to help him dig a trench from the banks of the Barton right up to Long Pond. Okay. You dig a trench, create a new outlet, and Long Pond adds some much-needed water to the Barton River. And boom, Wilson's Mill is back in business. And we have to remember that everyone needs the mill. You bring your grains and things like that to get them ground up there. It's a pretty critical business to any community. So when Mr. Wilson puts out the word of what he's trying to do and what he's looking for... Men respond right away from Glover, Wheelock, and nearby Sheffield. It's now June 6th, the day to dig. Sixty men show up with lunches and shovels in their hands. I'll pay you each a day's wage to dig this trench, Wilson tells the assembled crew. And by 8 a.m., they're digging. The work is going quickly. By noon, the trench is four feet deep, six feet wide, and more than 30 feet long. It leads from the banks of the Barton River right up to just below the edge of Long Pond. But it's noon, so the men take a break for lunch. And it's a lunch well-deserved. I mean, they've moved tons of dirt in just four hours. And all that's left is to pretty much break through the north wall of Long Pond. And then, Mr. Wilson, he'll be back in business. Around 1 p.m., the men are rested and well-fed. So they grab their shovels and get back to digging the last section of the trench. It's the section that will connect Long Pond and Barton River. The crew digs right up to the banks of the pond and then finally breaks their way through the hard pan layer of clay and dirt. But then, something goes horribly wrong. What no one could have known, least of all Aaron Wilson, is that underneath that hard pan layer of dirt is quicksand. Quicksand as fine as flour. As the water begins to pour through, the ground around them suddenly just crumbles. Then the situation goes from bad to worse. Long Pond is now making a run for it. The pond is pouring out its contents in a mighty torrent. It's now clear this is going to be a disaster. Wilson sees the raging waters overflowing the Barton River. He knows people and buildings downriver are in serious danger. People like Mrs. Wilson. What will become of my wife? Mr. Wilson yells. She's back at the mill, right in harm's way, and completely unaware of what just happened. So Aaron Wilson starts running the five miles toward his house. But the men can see there's no way Wilson will make it in time. 
They need a faster runner. He'll never get there! Chamberlain, you're the one that can reach the mill if anyone can. Run, Chamberlain, run! And with that, the tall 24-year-old Spencer Chamberlain is in full sprint, passing Aaron Wilson and losing both his hat and coat in the chase against the river that's swelling and growing angrier by the second. Long Pond is still pouring its contents into the river and beyond, and now the flood is tearing down trees and anything else in the way. At times, some temporary dams are formed by all the debris, which gives Chamberlain the chance to stay just ahead of the devastation. The five miles between Long Pond and Mrs. Wilson's fate are closing fast for Chamberlain. But Long Pond is still dumping its two billion gallons of water into the river. And those temporary dams only hold a few minutes until enough water backs up and breaks through. In the valley, some claim the raging waters reach 75 feet in height wow. and are ravaging everything in their path. Houses are blown away, barns, fences, cattle, horses. None of them stand a chance against the violent flood. Still, Chamberlain keeps running. And he's staying ahead of the devastation too. Chamberlain sees the mill ahead. It's the home stretch. He races inside, finds Mrs. Wilson, and escorts her to safety far from the river's edge. And just minutes later, the devastation hits the mill and destroys the building. Mrs. Wilson would have been lost if not for the fast feet of Spencer Chamberlain, the man who outran a river. Now it takes only 90 minutes for Long Pond to pour itself into the river and valley below. In a period of six hours, all of that water and carnage tears a scar 23 miles down the river until Lake Memphermagog swallows up what's left of Long Pond. The devastation is brutal. There are many houses and barns that have been completely wiped away, plus the loss of livestock. It's nothing short of a miracle that no people are killed during this disaster. What in the world was Aaron Wilson thinking? <laughs> I know, right? What do you expect when you break through the walls of a pond? You're not going to be able to control what happens next. I hear you, right? Let's ask him. Aaron Wilson, you're not too far from a fool, are you? Huh? I said, you're not very far from a fool, are you? No, that's right. Just this shovel here between us. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> and not well liked after this incident, if you can imagine. I mean, there are lawsuits that follow and a cleanup effort that will take years to clear out all that tangled, fallen destruction. Still, there's some good that comes from this disaster, believe it or not. Okay. First, the raging water basically tilled and then soaked miles of soil, creating some pretty epic farmland. Okay. And second, the water tore through the valley, leaving behind a bed for a, a road that will go on to become Route 16. Oh. And that brings us back to today. After the lawsuits and initial cleanup, Aaron Wilson and his wife left for New Hampshire. I'm sure it can't be easy living in a town that you've practically <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> no, it can't. <laughs> and old Spencer Chamberlain never was the same again. He lived in Glover for 40 more years, and they say he never quite recovered from his sprint against nature. The town of Glover has not forgotten this event either. In 1910, on the centennial of the original disaster, they had a townwide party. As you do. And they placed a monument. In 2010, the 200-year anniversary, the town held a three-day party. Okay. And each July for the last 20 years, Glover has held its annual Run Chamberlain Run Road Race for runners and walkers. Oh, it's kind of awesome when a yeah. town turns a bonehead mistake <laughs> and a heroic run into an annual event. I agree. So I'm guessing we're not going to find a pond here along Route 16 today because, well, it's gone. Right. It ran away over 200 years ago. But the town did have the sense to rename it. Really? Well, what's the name now? Dry Pond. Well, that seems fitting. <laughs> it does. And it would be fitting if you guys would consider posting a review of our show on iTunes. Those reviews go a long way in helping others find us in a crowded lake of <laughs> podcasts. So, and the more listeners we have, the more people contact us with stories, the more tales you'll hear. You can also visit our website at OurNewEnglandLegends.com where you can hear our entire archives of shows, see dates for Jeff's ongoing story tour, and see clips from the New England Legends television series on PBS and Amazon Prime. And we'd like to thank Michael Leggy and Dustin Perry for lending their voice acting talents this week. And of course, our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. Thank you.